Today, I will talk about Sadhu Sangha, the value of Sadhu Sangha. The shloka is from Srimad Bhagavatam. It says, Satam Prasangam Mavirya Samvido Bhavanti Rit Karna Gasaya Nakita Tat Yoshanat Asa Pavar Gavartmani Shradarati Bhakti Anukamishyati. In the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of God, it is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation. And therefore, he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. In the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing, satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and therefore he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begins. Satam prasangam mamavirya samvidu bhavanti hit karna rasayana katha tat yushanat asa bhaval kavalpani shadarati bhakti anu kramishyati. So, yes, also again we have our Radha. Radha? Where is Radha? Shradha. Hmm? Radha? Shraddha. Marvaka, are you one? <laughs> you made my day. <clears throat> Radha and Shraddha. Imagine. Try to understand that. Shraddha is face. Face is Radha. Shraddha is Radha. Ooh, amazing. That's really, that's really firm face means <coughs> firm Radha. Be with Radha. Work with Radha. Work for Radha. Radhi 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 Radhi. This is Radha Radha. Radha 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 Radha. We want to say good luck, good Radha. Don't lose your Radha. Don't lose your Radha. Interesting, Vishavasya, right? It's revolutionary, no? Just such a simple thing. One word. Shraddha. It's with the S, with the service. Selfless service. Shraddha. Then you can understand who's brother and what's brother. Now, for me, this subject today, first of all, I thank you all to be here. Saturday, our Mela. <coughs> Such a wonderful devotee group from all over. Yes. What does it mean, devotees? Appreciating devotees. What does it really mean? It means to see the connection of a devotee with Radha and Krishna. That's why we sing. Radhe, Radhe Govinda, Govinda Radhe, Radhe, Radhe Govinda, Govinda Radhe. This is the, the Radha chant. We always chant Radha. The Radha chant, the Radha movement. But Radha keeps in the background. Why? Why Radha keeps in the background? What is the, the secret of that? Well, first of all, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha. He is Radha outside and 
Krishna is very hidden, the hidden incarnation. Therefore, we can talk about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we don't have to talk about Radha Govinda. But because we're talking about Mahaprabhu, then we're talking about Radha Govinda. So he is the personification of Shraddha, of Radha. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us. He teaches us service. Real service is to the servant of the servant of the servant. Ashraya. Ashraya. The word Ashraya comes in very important here. Ashraya Vigraha. Ashraya means shelter. Radha is giving shelter. But she is giving shelter through the representative. Means the Ashraya Vigraha is actually the Guru. That's why the Guru is so important in our, in our tradition. Because he's Ashraya Vigraha. He connects us to the shelter. We can't emphasize that enough, even though we shouldn't make a personality cult out of it. Personality cult is, is, is a sectarian. I, my guru, and nobody else. No, it's not like that. It's a misunderstanding. Is, is my guru Krishna? All the gurus, all the sadhus, that's why the sadhu sangha is so important here. Sadhu sangha is very connected to Guru Tattva. Because the sadhus are the ones who are giving shelter. You sadhus are the ones who have to give shelter. And I will explain to you today how you give shelter. What's there? What is the ingredient of giving shelter? Sadhu sangha, giving shelter. Ashraya Vigraha, Guru Tattva. It's a very broad concept. Pita Guru, Mata Guru. It, you should not become a spiritual master. You shouldn't become a father, a mother, a teacher, or anything. Not a governor. If you're not ready to save your dependence from the repeated births and deaths. In other words, the Vedas, they speak to everyone. They speak to the whole society. They speak to every father and to every mother. You understand that? The Vedas are not speaking only to some very high elevated Vaishnava from India. No. The Vedas are addressing this sub subject of Sanatana Dharma forming society, forming family, forming community. They are speaking to us. They're given for us. And that's what made Prabhupada so powerful. That he just didn't discriminate. He made it clear. I'm speaking to you. You have to chant the Maha Mantra. You have to go to Mangal Arti. You have to listen to class. You have to preach. You have to offer your food before you eat. You have to establish some place where Krishna can be found. You have to become a sadhu by serving the sadhus. That is the, the very teachings of the sadhus, of the, of the scriptures, is you, 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 you. They are not for them. They are for you. What you are going to do about this? Yesterday we had a very interesting subject. Fix it or it's, it's going to be broke. So do you want to be, live a broken life? No, then fix it. Do you want to have a broken relationship with your guru? Yeah, you want to break your relationship with your guru? Then what will you have? So if you broke or if something broke, fix it. In Godiamat, if somebody broke the principles after initiation, he has to go back to the Guru and take initiation again. He has to go back and say, Guru Deva, accept me, give me initiation again. Or reconnect me to my initiation. If 
you break, break a principle, even smoking marijuana, you're disconnected. Maybe in the, in the Vaishnava society it doesn't feel like that because Vaishnavas are very merciful. But factually, when you break a principle, you cut. And then if you want to save yourself, you want to fix the relationship, then you have to come and say, I want to fix that relationship. And then you have to be accepted again. It's a heart-to-heart -heart transaction. Doesn't mean you need to necessarily go to another fire ceremony, even though it's not a bad idea. The fire ceremony, you're promising before Krishna, I am connected. It's not superficial, it's real. All the things in spiritual life are real. And the sadhus are real, and the ashraya vigraha is real. Because if there is no ashraya vigraha, there's nothing. If there's no sadhu, if there's no class, if there's no mahamantra, <coughs> if there's no prashant, if there's no Sunday feast, if there's no Vaishnava association, no, then there's nothing. If the car is broken, it won't run. So what are you going to do with a broken Mercedes? Maybe brand new, but if it's broken, it don't run. And you have to pay another car to pull it to a mechanic. Because you can't fix it yourself. And until you fix it, until you pay the money to get the car fixed, to fix the car is useless. Just making a disturbance. <laughs> Anything which doesn't work makes disturbance. So therefore, spiritual life is a transaction. A giving and taking, a giving and taking. I give because I have received. When I give, I get. What you give, you get. You want to get love? Give love. Come on. Even MC Yogi, he chants it in his song. Give your love away, give your love away. I'm not saying even, he's a great soul. But give your love away. You want to get love? Give love. And what does it mean, give love? Oh, 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 oh. Hippie love. I was just saying this morning, now this has become the fashion of hugging. Everybody hugging. <laughs> and the next moment, the next moment you let that person go to hell. And you don't do anything about it. And you listen, you, there's no connection, there's no real, real, hey, how are you? How I help you? What's the use of all this hugging business? I and mean, it feels good. Of course it feels good when you hug somebody. You feel, oh, why? Why you feel why it feels good? Good. Because hugging means somebody cares for you. But nowadays we hug everybody, but we don't care for nobody. So what's the use of that hugging? Could as well kick everybody. <laughs> hey, you too, you too, and you kick too. Hmm? So it's meaningless. What is hippie hugging? Huh? Maybe we should even be naked like monkeys. Huh? Then we can have naked monkey hugging. Hmm? Maybe then our hugging will become more special. So many crazy ideas out of this world. But Sadhu Sangha is not crazy. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha is Ashrada. Dana Purusha Dhamasya Without faith in this, you cannot progress. Without faith in the car, you cannot take it. Because you have to sit in the car, then you can go in the car. And if the car is broken, you cannot go even sitting in the car. You can sit in a broken car. Okay. No, it's broken. Let me make it run. No, it's broken. It will not run that now. First it has to be fixed. Okay, get out. So then you're standing outside. So now what's the next way? Well, walk. That's why you get two feet. Go to meet the sadhus 
and go to get get connected and follow the principle of making Vrindavan. Sadhu Sangha is Vrindavan. Shraddha is Radha. Where is Radha? Is Vrindavan. Where is Radha? There is Vrindavan, my dear. We have a temple in Berlin. Yes. It's an example. We can have many temples. We can have temple in Mirwig. We can have temple in Freiburg. We can have temple in Munich. We can have temple in Bad Homburg. We can have temple everywhere. If somebody wants to have a temple there, then he has to create the place of Shraddha. He has to create the place of Radha. He has to create the place of Ashraya Vigraha. Who is Ashraya Vigraha? The sun. Therefore, Sadhu Guru, that's why it says Shastra Sadhu, wait, uh, Guru Shastra Sadhu Vakya Chitete Kodi Aikya. It's a very essential verse of Narada Vasta. Shastra, Guru first. Guru, without Guru, you don't know anything. And who is Guru? Vartmana Pradakshaka Guru is the one who first told you about Krishna. You know, no, no, everybody has a different Vartmana Pradakshaka Guru. I think Vartmana Pradakshaka Guru of, of Ishavasya was called Jiva, right? Hmm? Tom. Who was your Vartmana Pradakshaka Guru? Paul. Paul. Who was your partner of production guru? My dad. Your dad. Who was your partner of production guru? Who, uh, I read it in the book. Mm -hmm. And who gave you the book? Someone on the street. On the street. <laughs> yeah, this is his partner of production guru came to him in the street. Take it. Read it, Krishna Das. This is for you. <laughs> hmm? Who was your partner of production guru? Madonna. Hmm? Madonna. Madana. Madana? <coughs> mm -hmm. Who was your Vatmana Pradaksha? <coughs> huh? Your mother? Yeah. Just see, it's so many different Vatmana Pradaksha Gurus. No? And then the next thing, and who's your Ashraya Vigraha? Where did you take shelter? Where did you go and practice this? Where did you make your commitment? Where did you say, okay, this is my commitment, I am here, this is what I'm doing. There's two ways to make a commitment in our Krishna conscious world. One is, you cut the wood, and the other one is, you give the axe to somebody else. That's a South American, uh, uh, it's a woodcutter saying, you know. Either you take the axe and cut the wood, or you give the axe to somebody else. No? So, either you maintain the temple yourself, or you help somebody to maintain the temple. And what is a temple? An institution? Uh -uh. No, 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 no. A, a temple is Vrindavan. It's a place where Vrindavan is alive. A place where the food is offered to Krishna. It's a place where every morning there is a class. It's a place where you can see a Mangal Arti. It's a place where you can hear the Mahamant. It's a place where there is a deity. There's a place where people know who is Lord Nishinga there. It's a place where the word is called for preaching. It's a place where you can give money and it's going to turn it's going to be turned into luxury. If you go in the supermarket and buy things, your your lux your money is not turned into luxury. But if you go to the temple and help them to make a new wall, a new door, a new this, a new that, then your money is turning into luxury. And if you say, no, I don't want to help this temple. I want to make a 
new temple, myself, somewhere else. More shrine. You really want to do that? You want to make a temple somewhere? Congratulations. You see, Krishna consciousness means we need we need nothing. Mandali, you're back. Yeah. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Now is popular in Bangladesh and in Germany. <laughs> so, whew. so you want to make another temple? Congratulations! Really, congratulations! But you want to do that? You want to make a place of Shraddha? You will want to establish a place of Ashraya Vigra? That's what you want to do. Well, there's different types of, of places you can establish. You can establish a Namahata Sangha, a Namahata Kendra, and a Namahata Mandir. Namahata Sangha is a place where there's a lecture about Krishna with Prashad and the Sadhu speaking once a week or even once a month. That's called Namahata Sangha. Who's speaking? You. You should speak. You should become the sadhu. Maybe you can invite the sadhu, also it's good, but the idea is that you speak to your people. Everybody has his people, his friendships, his family. Everybody has some people. So if you invite to, to people to listen from you, that is a Namahata Sangha. I mean, if really, you're one of those shy guys that just said, oh, I need somebody to come here and give the lecture, because I'm just incapable. Okay, then you cook and you finance the program. But do something, otherwise you do something, you do nothing. Namahata Kendra, same idea, but daily. <coughs> daily, in your place, the door is open, here's Krishna, now we have his bhajan, we sing Mahamanta, we listen to the scriptures and maybe we make some monetary collection from the congregation to give to some temple who we are participating with. Because Sangha and Kendra, they are privately financed basically. In other words, they take place in somebody's home. <laughs> And you don't want to go to people and say, now I say Hare Krishna so that you pay my electric bill. Huh? It's not the idea. So if you're a Namahata Sangha and a Namahata Kendra, you have to be connected to a mandir and have to help that mandir. You, you are allowed to make those programs, but you, you have to connect the Lakshmi to Vrindavan, to Shraddha, to Radha. Very scientific process. It's very scientific and very beautiful as well, and it works. But it only works when we do it from the heart. We just do it from the outside like an, like an imitation, and that doesn't work. If there's falsity in the system, then water seeks its own level and somebody has to disappear and somebody else comes. Who knows what Krishna controls? We know that Krishna controls. And that is our only hope, that he forgives our mistakes and helps us to become real. Like I said yesterday, it's broke, fix it. Don't be a fool. Don't leave it broken and wonder why it's not working. That's really stupid, no? It's like you, you have a machine, it's broken, and you just look, oh, why are you broken? Let me pray. Please fix this machine. <laughs> <laughs> Get it fixed or get a new one, but do your job. What the heck? Just sitting there and talking nonsense. Some people talk nonsense. There's a lot of nonsense going on in this world, I tell you. People go for a techno party, three days. <laughs> what are they doing with their life? Huh? Probably intoxicated also. Huh? You're becoming sick. And then they say, oh, this is brave. 
we are, we are, we are uh, now shill out. Hmm? <laughs> the world is crazy and dangerous, very dangerous. It's not a joke. So, the Namahata Sangha, the Namahata Kendra, and the Namahata Mandir. Namahata Mandir means there is Shraddha. Means there is Radha. Means there is a Shraya. Means there is Sadhu. One Sadhu can make a Mandir. As good as you have ten, if you're lucky to live with ten Sadhus, but one Sadhu is enough. Because one sadhu takes his japa and chants. One sadhu takes the midanga and chants. One sadhu takes the bhagavatam and reads. One sadhu takes the food and offers it. One sadhu opens the door and says, come in. One sadhu tells you, stay here, this is a temple, you can do service. You were alone sometimes. Hmm? And people came. And if you would not have been there, then they could not have come. So he was alone in an eco farm in, in Cusco. That's how he met many people, including his wife. <laughs> well, you preach Krishna consciousness, then Krishna is pleased and sends you a nice wife. Why not? Don't many of us are searching for a nice life companion? So Krishna is so merciful, he's even giving that. He's giving even a nice wife and now a nice kid. <clears throat> now he can preach in Austria. Krishna's plan to extend from one place to another. Why not? Great idea. Now Rasa Darish is going to look after that place. Parts. Part. Her? Because where he was, he has a, he has a, uh, he was in the Shraddha. It was Shraddhavan. It was called the Forest of Faith. <coughs> Shraddhavan, the farm. And Rasadari has a land next to Shraddhavan she bought. And now she's helping me to make a Vishnu Priyashram there. So, amazing. Hmm? So this is this is like how it works. You know, you do something. One sadhu can make a temple. In in Hungary, we don't have many people in the temple, but Madhavi is there. One Madhavi, she can make it in ten temples. What's the problem? Hmm? In Sweden, there was Sevananda for some time alone. Everybody else was busy elsewhere, but Sevananda stuck it through. And the temple is open. Nimahuset. Nimahuset is a very sweet place. It's really a, it's really like a, a little ashram. It's really, really little, but it's really, really sweet. And it is like because one sadhu, get it? One sadhu makes the thing. That's why sadhu sangha is so important because a sadhu is such a powerful guy. He says. And what he really says, he says, come into my heart. He says, open the doors of your heart and show Krishna who is within. Then you can do it. If people see that, you know, people don't trust easily. They go to a place and there's one son. One son? No, it's not possible. Next day they come, same guy is there. Like the Hindus. And the Hindus are like that. When they see you first time, they don't believe in you. When they don't, when they see you ten times, they say, "This is strange. Why is this guy still here?" <laughs> hmm? After they see you fifty times, they start believing in you, and then they give you anything you want. But they first want to see you fifty times. They, they, they don't go for the first time. Hmm? Don't, so, in this way, a very serious, very serious issue. Krishna consciousness is a very serious issue. And the responsibility is so one sadhu can open a place. And one we has the couple can also. Like I know some of you have the couple, they have no children. 
You have no children for some reason? And you open the temple and you have so many children. What is the heck? I, I never procreated a child, but Krishna has blessed me with so many children, I even have two new dies right here. <laughs> Not one, two new dies. Huh? Born only two days apart. I mean, that's, that's a record. No? Hmm? And you look how handsome these guys are. No? Really far out kids. No? I mean, you gotta be a far out kid to be called Nitai. So, so, it's very real. Krishna consciousness is 100% real. The Sadhu Sangha is 100% real. Of course, some people take it more serious than others. And if you don't take it serious, then it won't work. Same example. No temple, then a fixed one. That's a, there's, a, there's a place, there's no mandir, then fix one. What do you fix? Well, at least fix an Amahata Sangha. At least fix an Amahata Kendra. Or fix an Amahata Mandir. Who's going to decide that? You know who? You decide that. You decide whether you're going to have nothing, a Sangha, a Kendra, or a Mandir. Well, how can you decide it? Well, you just follow the principles, what it means. You want to have a, you want to have a Namahata Sangha? Do you know where our temple in Colombia started? I will tell you a story. One person bought a book of Prabhupada in the airport of Miami. His name was Rico. He went down to Colombia and he started reading the book. But that, that's far out. That's really beautiful. But we have nothing of this here in Colombia. Well, let me write them a letter. So wrote them a letter to the publisher of the book. It says, we got your book in the airport. It's really nice, but we have a problem here in Colombia. Nobody knows about that. And then he sent a letter to who? Well, to the author of the book, to Prabhupada. So Prabhupada got a letter. There's no Krishna consciousness in Colombia, and we really like your book. <laughs> what to do? So Prabhupada called the temple next, which was in Venezuela at that time. There was a few devotees in Venezuela, just a handful, you know. And he said, there's an emergency call from Colombia. Could you please send some devotees to Colombia? Now, an order of Prabhupada, that was an order from God, you know. People took it that way at that time. Sometimes that gets lost when we are careless. So, so some devotees said, okay, Prabhupada sent somebody to Colombia. Let's go to Colombia. So, who went? Hari Charan and Ilan Chesta. Ilan Chesta is how we two disciples of Prabhupada. I just have a recording of Ilan Chester. He made a very nice recording just recently. You cannot believe it. He made a symphony orchestra of all of Caracas playing for Krishna Bhajans. Very beautiful. If you have heard that already, Lalita Madhava has it. You can ask for it. Anyhow, so these fellows, they went over. But when they went to Colombia, they had the address of the guy who had, uh, who had called for help. But I guess they couldn't find him immediately, and they had no money, or oh, very little money. So what did they do? They rented a garage, a garage, you know, where you put a car. They rented a garage which had a little bathroom. That was the first temple in Colombia. And they went out on Sankitan preaching, and inviting people to the garage. Now you don't tell me please that you cannot get a garage for Krishna. I mean if you can't get a garage for Krishna you should uh, think about your life again why you are in such a broken condition that you cannot even get a garage. Maybe you don't have a car but a garage. 
I mean, this is just, just a, a little box. In, in the garage in Colombia, they started, and one of the first devotees they made was Srila Bhakti Bhimalahari Maharaj. He joined Krishna in that garage. And that's how Krishna consciousness became established in Colombia. Slowly, slowly, one, 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 one. Mohana was here, she's looking now after 43 temples. And like this, it's, it's spreading, there's so many people. Same principle, go, do it. So you can start in a carriage. It doesn't matter. And invite people. You know how, how people's hearts get touched? When you invite them into a garage, of course not a garage, just a dirty garage, you hang nice cloths on the wall, a Krishna picture, you make an altar, and you, you, you something, and people see that. Jai Sisi, Guru, Puranga, Mandarika, Kovinda Sundara. Namaste, Saraswati Devi. Dura Bhagavad Gita, Chahamini, Nivishi, Shushubha, Vajpaskaj, So, of course, in a garage, generally, you don't think you're going to sleep there, no? Mm -hmm. So it's not so common, people sleeping in garages. But when, when, when we opened our temple in Miami, we didn't sleep in garages, we slept on the bridges. Because we had only little money, we didn't want to spend it. So we slept on the bridges until the police came and said, we catch you again on the bridge, we rest. So the next day Krishna gave us a temple. So if you want to do something, it's like, get it done. Just do it. There's no reason not to do it. That's the way I learned it. That's the way I, I experienced it. And it's really, really nice. Just like this lake looks so nice today. Inviting for a good swim. <laughs> hmm? Yes, yesterday, Paramatma tried out. He gave it the test. <laughs> Who? Jana. So, so the, the Shraddha, Radha, the Radha place, that's what you're supposed to have. Do it, or help somebody do it, do it. Then you turn your money into Lakshmi, and you help somebody do it. It's so mystical, it's so magical. You will see so, such an incredible change in your life when you have a, month, when you have a temple in a garage. Why not? But then who's going to go to the garage to preach there? Well, the sadhu. That is the sadhu who goes there and preaches. We want sadhu sangha? Well, the sadhu sangha has to make himself available. That is the sadhu. Of course, we have also different variety. Sometimes we have a, a a, a yoga center where they're chanting mantras and they're inviting people to, to read the Gita sometimes. That's why we call it yoga inbound. Because our, our yoga is not just gymnastics. Our yoga is the invitation to understand bhakti. What is bhakti? Without knowing what's bhakti, the yoga is pretty much a commercial thing. And the devotees are not commercial. Which does not mean they cannot make money. They also need money sometimes, no problem, but they are not commercial. Practically speaking, nothing we do is commercial, and still Krishna has given us so much mercy. So much mercy, it's unbelievable. Really unbelievable. But everywhere you go, it's just hard work. Because that's what a sadhu does. A sadhu does hard work. That's the nature of a sadhu. He don't complain. He don't say, oh, sorry, I'm so unlucky, I'm so sick, I'm so this, I'm so that. No. A sadhu don't complain. A sadhu just to work. Whatever work he can. If you can't lift 
uh, three, three bags of cement. Well, don't do it, fool. Don't break your back. Just carry one bag. 40 kgs, you can. Oh, you can? Okay, then carry 20. You remember the spider? He carried a little sand dust and Rama appreciated his, his service. Don't carry what will break your back. That's not Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu are smart. They're intelligent about hard work. The nature of a Sadhu is always hard working. And he always looks for opportunities to speak, to speak the glories of Krishna. Let's come back to our shloka of today. In the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of God is very pleasing. Satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation and decides to become a sadhu also. And there, after he's freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Yeah, when you, when you decide, I'll fix it and I'll do it, then you become fixed. No, it's the same word. You're fixed after it is fixed. Hmm? Got it? If it's broke, it's not fixed and you're not fixed. Fixed in consciousness, fixed up. Then real devotion and devotional service begins. So this, this, this uh, shloka really confirms this 100% what I'm trying to explain to you. It's the garage mandir. Start your temple in a garage. Or if you have a house, why you start it in a garage? You can also start in a house. If you have a farm, start it in a farm. When I went to Poland to Krishna Kid, I said, come on, buy a farm, have a farm for Krishna, and let's go there and have a little sadhu sadhu sangha. Let's do something, have a place. And go there and off open the doors. What is the big deal? Oh, you can't? You cannot do that? Well, then open your private house and says, let's have a meeting here. Or, go in a park every day. <coughs> so, so when I went to <coughs> East Germany, my preaching was, there was no temple in East Germany. I just walked, my, my preaching in East Germany was just walking in the street with my japa. <laughs> and smiling at everybody. <laughs> that was my preaching. I couldn't pull out books. I couldn't give invitation cards. Nothing. An interesting way of doing Sankita, no? Japa Sankita. And everybody looks at you. What, what's happening with the guy? Does he have some, some his, his fingers hurt? His hand is hurt? Why the fingers are out? Strange phenomena. And people approach me. They say, who are you? And then I checked them out. Are you from Stasi or <laughs> I had to scan them. <laughs> oh, I'm just visiting East Berlin chanting a little bit. What are you chanting? Oh, I'm chanting. Oh, thank God. What? Oh, that's nice. It's meditation. That was my preaching. And then I felt the guy's not from Stasi. <laughs> the guy's real. He's not just an investigator. And I started saying, well, yeah, the Bhagavad Gita says, and I said, and they said, oh, I really like that. I really like that. Oh, oh, how can I find out more about it? <coughs> Give me your telephone. We have a meeting sometimes in different parks in Berlin. Anybody, if we have a telephone to tell you, we will call you and tell you in which park at what time the program is. That's how it worked. So I got his telephone and I kept walking with him. Next one. I used to go early in the morning, Bahnhof Friedrichstraße, over the border, checkpoint Charlie. No, it's a Bahnhof Friedrichstraße, you went directly inside. Walked around all day, came back late at night. That was my service for a good time. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jaka walking preaching. And on Sunday, I used to go with another person and to arrange some prashad. So we had to arrange some prashad. In the beginning, very difficult how to arrange prashad. Because when you, at those days, when you went over Bhagavad Fritishtas, they would look everything. You couldn't bring one book inside. It was very screened. It was crazy people. Crazy Germans. Hmm? And then, in the Sunday, in the park, we had five people, then ten people, then fifteen people. I think we reached thirty, forty people in the park. Where they by this system, because in the in the in the German Republic that that was like, hey, hey, there's a problem. They're gonna sing some mantras there. So they brought some friends, and it worked. And we were starting. So you can preach in the park. Is that you don't need a house for preaching if you really want to preach. That's what I'm trying to point out. That's why I mentioned the parks here. If you really have no place, no garage, nothing. If you're so poor that you can only go to the park, well then preach in the park. The parks are full of people. They want to hear. Take an harmonium, sit down in the park and start chanting. Somebody will sit down to next to you and ask you, why you're chanting here? What is going on? And then the preaching starts. That's sad. Sadhu, he does such things. He makes, he, he devises any kind of plan so that people can find Ashraya, that they can find Shraddha. The place of Radha is established. And for the Sadhu, the most satisfying thing is to establish the worship of Radha Govinda. Like our dear Tisya. This is the most satisfying goal. But then, if you have deities, wow, then you need a morning program, a night program. Then it's not only like uh, a little garage with a little lecture on Sunday. No, no, no. If you have Radha Krishna deities, then it becomes a full-scale Vendavan representation. See, that's what we're really working on when we are practicing Sadhu Sangha. The sum and substance, the essence of it, is welcome to the divine family. Today we got the visit of a swan here. Welcome to the divine family. Paramahansa, Thakur, Prabhupada. Hmm. This is very nice, very auspicious to get the visit of a Paramahansa. So our, our spiritual family, Sadhus, is doing this job, Samad, because that's what the Sadhu has to do. The Sadhu has to be involved. Now, if you are not capable of doing it, then help somebody who does it. That's why we are all connected very intimately connected with uh, with our Radha Krishna deities who are like our Ishta Dev. That's another thing we are learning from our Prabhupada, that the existence of the Ishta Dev. We want to have, we need to have an Ishta Dev. Our Prabhupada, our Krishna uh, gives us, our, our Guru establishes our Ishta Dev. Who is your Ishta Dev? Now you may have an extension of the Ishtadev, like in, you may have the extension in Mevegen of Mahaprabhu, it's an extension of the Ishtadev. It's not different and when you have an extension of the Ishtadev, you also should invest there money to make beautiful things for the Ishtadev. It's also there. So Krishna consciousness is not interested to monopolize anything, but 
at the same time, if we as the devotees cannot fix our temple in Berlin, which is the headquarter of the Rinda mission, we can't fix that. That's really a, a sign of poverty because we cannot fix one temple in India. They have making beautiful temples everywhere. I mean, by the way, we are not interested in temples. Mahaprabhu is also not inter interested in temples because it's Kali Yuga. But even though they are not interested in temples, they are opening temples all the time. So how can you explain that? How can you explain that Rupa Goswami was not interested in opening temple and then he made the Radha Govinda temple, which even five years 500 years later is the most outstanding architectural contribution of all of north of India done by our Rupa Goswami. So it's a kind of a thing, it's not a contradiction. It's just like the devotees, they don't want to make temples. They want to open the temple in the heart. Open the doors of your heart and make a temple inside. Make a temple. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, my real business is to open a temple in everyone's heart. He wants to make Shraddha, Radha, to be alive in your heart. He wants to make you to become a Ashraya Vigraha. Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta came to make you a Sadhu. So that is the, oh, that is the shelter, that is the trust. That is the most amazing thing. We, by the mercy of Krishna, became sadhus by His grace. Not, nothing else, nothing else, only by His grace. And why not? Why should we not be sadhus? Is there anything better to become? Tell me. Or you want to become a PhD. You think that is more important than becoming a sadhu? Or maybe, maybe, maybe you work hard day and night and you join some community of scientists. Maybe you get a, become a Nobel laureate and you can walk like this. I'm a Nobel laureate. Hmm? There's few of them, like Obama. <laughs> the, Nobel, the Nobel Prize of Peace for Obama. The guy is sending the, 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 these unmanned drones to kill thousands and thousands of people in, in, in Pakistan and all those areas. They are testing out drones, how drones can kill people. And then he's getting the, the Nobel Prize of Peace. I mean, you cannot even pee on that prize. It's not worth peeing on it, you know. <laughs> no? It's such a ridiculous thing. But, so I'm asking, what is it what you want to become? You want to become a Nobel laureate? You want to become a PhD or you want to become a son? Well, I understand by the grace of our Srila Prabhupada, by inviting us to be part of his family, he has given us a chance to become Brahmins. And this gift of Srila Prabhupada to make us Brahmins, there's no way to pay for that. Prabhupada actually invited us to, to become a member of the Brahminical community, Sadhu community. You know Sadhu, the word Sadhu has even more weight than Brahmin, because Brahmins is some uh, there's some Karmakanda Brahmins, there's some smarter Brahmins, so they're not even that elevated nowadays, all of them. But Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati wanted to restore the dignity of Brahminship. And be, want, because he wanted to restore it, therefore he gave Diksha, initiation and sacred threat to those who took the Mahamantra and became initiated in his family. Just like Babaji's. There are some people, Babaji's, they did a lot of nonsense in the name of Babaji's. So Srila Puri Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, he came to restore the dignity of Babaji by training up some real good Babaji's for doing the Babaji Seva, which is 
like a sannyasi dedicated to the pleasure of Krishna. That is, that is, that is uh, the grace of our Acharyas. Bhakti Vinotako, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, Bhakti uh, Rakakshida Maharaj, Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj. They all came to restore the Shraddha. They restored the Ashraya Vigraha. They restored the Brahmins. They restored the Babajis. They restored the dignity of a spiritual institution. You can understand what is a spiritual institution if you are not attached to the spiritual institution with name and fame. If you attach your name and fame to an institution, then it's impure. It's not meant to be. Look at this little insignificant soul. I am an insignificant soul. Without Srila Prabhupada's mercy, I wouldn't even have the, the chance to get to know you, what to speak of speaking to you, and what to speak of having a fam spiritual family with you. But still, even though my insignificant service has created now a network of more than 200 temples in the world connected to uh, Gaudiya, uh, Gaudiya tradition, to the Vishwa Vaishnava Raj Shaba, that convinces me very clearly that really this is the divine plan it's supposed to be, but it's not, it's not a, an institution to be proud of. We are just struggling everywhere to, to even chant the Maha Mantra, to even get people up for Mangalarti, to, to even organize a, a good project. It's a struggle everywhere. But Worse would be if there would be no struggle. Hmm? No struggle means nothing. Like one person was saying hmm, to Srila Prabhupada, why is there so many problems in Krishna consciousness? Prabhupada said, problems? For each problem we have three progress. And then he said, no problems means you don't do anything. Say, thanks to the problems you have. Oh, I have lots of problems, so that means something is going on. Good news. Problems in Venezuela, good news. Problems in Nicaragua, good news. Problems in Sweden, good news. Uh, you never thought about it like that, no? <laughs> That's what Prabhupada said. No problems means you do nothing. Mm -hmm. So, Give me more problems. Hmm? And I do have problems. Italy problems. Our temple president just went through big surgery. He has to do all the work there. But we have to fix the condition. What is the status of a temple? Every temple has a status. How do you know the status of a temple? You know how? By defining who has the last word in this temple, number one. The one who has the last word in this temple, is he a sadhu? Does he work like a sadhu? Does he manage the place like a sadhu? Second question, does Krishna have a bank account? Does Krishna have his bank account where people deposit money inside which is going to be spent for Krishna according to the sadhu's visions? No bank account is no sadhu place. In other words, Radha, Shraddha, Radha, Ashraya Vigraha, Shraddha is Krishna's house manager. The Radha manages the money of Krishna. Just see, just see. Many people don't understand that. Even though I've spoken about that for the last 30 years, but some people say, really? Wow, I never thought about it. I don't know where they were that they never heard about it, never thought about it. First thing a temple means, make a bank account for Krishna. Yes. Or at least a box. Maybe you have no account. So this box, what goes inside, is not yours. And not yours. What's in this box belongs to him. Wow. And who's going to decide how to spend it? 
the sadhu or the sadhus? That's the question. That's the criteria. You say, my pocket is Krishna's pocket? No. Sorry. Not accepted. What's Krishna's is what you pull out of your pocket. You got it? You say, oh, my pocket is Krishna. Oh, yeah, that's what you like to be. You like to be Krishna as well, no? Now, next thing you're going to say, all the gopis come over to me also. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Only those who are married, they can take care of one gopi. <laughs> and then, she is still Krishna's gopi. You're just watching after her. You're just making sure she's okay and happy. Because that's what you do with gopis. You look after them. You don't cheat them. You don't abandon them. No, you, gopis, you have to look after them. It's not easy to look after gopis either. It's a big job. Anyhow, so Krishna's bank account. So where's the sun? Sun, it may be a garage. It may be a park pro program, but there must be Krishna's account. Who's going to spend the money? Of course, sometimes people spend their own money for Krishna. And that's true, they do that, by spending it themselves from their own pocket. This is nice, but they don't deserve donations. They do not deserve that other people give them money. Why? Because it's not transparent. They take from their pocket, they take from their pocket for Krishna, but you don't know. So if I give them money and they put it in their pocket, maybe later they take out less than they put in. Uh -huh. You believe such a thing could happen? Mm -hmm. People say, I'm doing for Krishna, please put all your donations in my pocket. Please see what I put in my pocket. And then, mm, then he takes a little bit. And he spends it again. But he's making a business from the thing. So there's not right. That's why temples have to be transparent. Sadhus, they're very good transparent managers. And they establish this is Krishna's account. Doesn't matter, Munich or Freiburg or whatever, there's no Krishna account, nothing is going on. Sometimes people don't want to know those details because then they have to give up the control. As soon as you give up the control, then it becomes a sadhu. Maybe the sadhu community will give the control to you. It's very possible the sadhu community will say, Hey, Ramanuja, you manage this account and you just give a report once a year. We want to know how, how much every money coming for Krishna in Austria, give it to Ramanuja, okay? Sadhu decision, okay, then you take it. But, on one side he has Krishna's pocket, this is really, on the other side he has Ramanuja's pocket. And he's not supposed to take from this side to this side, but he can take from this side to this side. Got it? If you don't understand that, your whole spiritual life is just, just a show. Why? Because Bhaktaram Yakyatapasam Sarvaluka Maheshwanam Suriram Sarvabhutanam Gyatra Mam Shantim Richati because Krishna is a supreme enjoyer, Bhaktaram. He's a supreme controller, Maheshwaram. He's a supreme friend of all, Sudidam. And when you understand that, then you have peace of mind. If you don't understand that, or if you do not accept that, you will not have peace of mind. As soon as you get crazy, doing anything wrong, your peace of mind is gone. Right? That's why Prabhupada gave us four regulative principles so that you have peace of mind. And peace of mind means you see where's Krishna's bank account, where's Krishna's sadhana, where's Krishna's shraddha, where's your radha. Not like when you get out on a trip and you see colors everywhere and you see, see ghosts everywhere and then they speak to you. Come here, go there, do this, do that. Huh? And you think, oh, now I'm very elevated consciousness. Oh, very nice. Huh? But you don't know where's your guru, you don't know what's a sadhu, you don't know where's Krishna's bank account. You forget everything. If you're in such a lamentable position, you better fix it. 
Otherwise, you may be just lost out there in the world of colors. Colors and ghosts. You won't find the ground for your feet. So in this way, it's really serious issue to understand what is a sudden and how a sudden behaves. And how the sudden points you in the right direction. Sadhu makes you sad. That is the criteria. Temper president makes you temper president. Preacher makes you preacher. Lover of God makes you lover of God. Generous person with Krishna consciousness contagiously makes you a generous person for Krishna consciousness. Stingy person association makes you stingy. Lip, just overly, overly free-spirited means undisciplined, makes you undisciplined also. Tell me with who you associate, I tell you who you are. So, yes, we need to make Vindavan. The sadhu makes Vindavan. Yes. Once Prabhupada said, don't be surprised who leaves this process. Don't be surprised. Be surprised about those who stay and keep working for the divine goals. Because it's not easy. And sometimes people slip. Okay. They get up again. Don't lie on the ground. So what? You slipped. Now are you going to keep lying there, stupid? <laughs> Give me a hand. <laughs> Stand again, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Because a sudden can pull you out. You can't pull yourself out. That's the famous example of the guy who's sinking in this quicksands, no? The quicksand, the more he moves, the more deeper he goes. So you should better not move. I mean, you've probably never been in quicksand. Hmm? <laughs> quicksand is very, very dangerous. You just go in. So, so if you're in quicksand, you have to keep quiet and cry out, help, help, help. Only somebody can help you to pull you out. So this is Maya, it's the quicksand. Maya is called Ayahuasca, marijuana, alcohol, ecstasy, fruitive thinking, name, fame, glory. It's the same old story. You're working hard like an ass for nothing more than grass. Ego. Ego is my. Hmm? Sexual pleasures which are not blessed. That's also Maya. Maya has many faces. Many, many, many faces. There are faces everywhere. Just like when you're on a trip, you see faces everywhere. And messages everywhere, but you don't know which one to take. I always give that example because it's a very painful example. One, you know, the, the ayahuasca fashion reached in South America 40 years ago. It just recently made its way to Germany and to Europe. But one Argentine disciple of Prabhupada, he came to Colombia. And he said, he asked, you know anybody who knows this ayahuasca? In Colombia they don't call it ayahuasca, they call it yahe. And one of my disciples, Rama Tirta, he was from the hippie scene just left the hippie scene and joined the temple and probably maybe sometimes still shaky, you know? And he said, oh, you're a proper disciple, you want to know about Jahe? Yes, please tell me. You know anybody, any Taita who, who does this session? So, the guy thought he was doing a service for a disciple of Prabhupada <laughs> by getting a place he could take ayahuasca. So he found some place and he said, yes, I know a place. And then the guy said, 
Why don't you take me there? Why don't you come with me? Why don't you take it with me? So he was a drug addict before, and now he decided Prabhupada told him, why not take it with me? So he went and he took ayahuasca with him. And then he saw so many colors and many faces, and all of a sudden some face came to him. He is a demon. He is a demon. You have to kill him. He said, what is that? Yes, he is a demon. You have to kill him. That is your service now. The voice told him. So on the ayahuasca trip, he pulled out the knife, or he got the knife from the kitchen, and he killed the disciple of Prabhupada. He stabbed him and killed him. And after he went down from his ayahuasca trip, he said, what did I do? I'm going to die. Because on a trip you get out of control. There's a whole thing. You give your life into the hand of energies and forces which you have no control about. That's what you're doing when you get drugged. You're giving up the, the sense of capacity of making sure what you do is according to Guru, Shasta, Sadhu and your heart. Four authorities, you're giving them up. You give up the Guru, you give up the Sadhu, you give up the Shastras and you give up your common sense, your own inner heart. That's what you do when you get intoxicated. Even just by getting drunk. When the guy is oh, 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 I'm so... Any drunk guy is out of control. That's why they do so many stupid things. You just have to sniff gasoline and you get out of it. And don't tell me about drugs. In, 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 in South America we have plants. You take one seed of it and chew, it, chew on them and for three days you forget your name. It's called cacao sabanero if you want to know about medicines. They're not medicines, they're dangerous drugs. Three days they don't know their name. They use this as a, they make a powder from it and they get escopolamina, it's called. You know that, any Colombian knows that. And then they put it on your head, on your head and you, you just breathe a little bit of it, just a powder, huh? And then you go, like a zombie, you become like a zombie. And then somebody says, come with me. Okay, where do you want to go? We go to the ATM to the cash register. Okay. You have a number? Yeah. You have money in it? Yeah. Take it out. <laughs> Give me the money. Okay. The, the problem has become so serious in Colombia, so serious, that in the ATM machines, it's prohibited that two people go inside at the same time. Because of this capacity of turning somebody in a zombie and stealing from him and this and that. So the guy killed him. Then he ran away. And what did he do? He came back to me. He said, Guru Dev. He said, what? I just killed one of you guys. And he told me the whole story. I said, God. He said, what shall I do now? know what to say. I said, you cannot live in the temple. I cannot have an assassin living in the temple here. It's not possible. Somebody said I should have called the police on him. Maybe it's the best, it would have been the best thing, but uh, I didn't know. I, I didn't know what to do that time. I was just like, I was in a state of shock. So things get out out of hand. And Benki Piari Ashaninka, one of the leading Amazonas ayahuasca people, and by the way a friend of mine, he's a, he's a leader of the ecology of the Amazon. When I was in an indigenous meeting, he, he was spanning with me, we stayed together in the same tent. I talked to him about the experience and what I was and what they're doing and how they're doing and all these details and he said if the person who's administering that portion 
is not totally expert and he's not completely aware of what he's doing. Very easily negative spirits can come in there and it gets totally out of control. And it's not the only story I can tell you. I can tell you several, several stories, but I don't want to waste your time. But, uh, but that, that's a fact. So he said that himself. And he was one of those persons who, who does these things in a medical. Ashaninka means he's the head of the Ashaninka natives. Means for them, that is the medicine they got from their forefathers. And maybe, another one told me, some of their people take it as an intoxication and not as a medicine. There's, there's micro potions, there's where you take this without any other and it's not intoxicating and maybe it helps some people, why not? I mean, the, it's a medicine from the Amazon, from them, but <coughs> absolutely not what you think or know about it or what the, nothing to do with the fashion. The fashion is just a hippie fashion. And people make money with that. And while people are on, on Waiwaska, it's famous that they rape the women there too. Because they lose the control over themselves, they're going there for the adventure. So in this way, it's very dangerous. No wonder it's prohibited, by, even by law, in Germany. Of course, when you go to the homeopathic clinic and you find all of a sudden there is Tollkirche, there is there's a different uh, high poisonous substances, but all of a sudden they are turned into, into some medical usage, mm -hmm. belladonna, no? that's a different story. <coughs> Sometimes morphine has to be administered at a certain level of of pain a person cannot support. So it's just, you know, but you have to be careful. Sigmund Freud, he was just a cocaine addict. For sure. He became addicted to that. And some doctors also careless. I just read in the paper the other day that in Germany, on the working place, I, there was an incredible amount of more than 40% of the German workers are taking pharmacy, pharmaceutical pill to get pushed up to do their jobs. Huh? Something like 40. I, you can read in Spiegel. Huh? What is it? Drugs, pills on the working place. And the whole world is half drugged out. You so get a kick off. So then you take an, take an amphetamine and you can run twice as fast. Mm -hmm. So that's why the sports people are all taking the drugs and then they win the competition and then later they have to return their trophies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, you want to drug yourself and the world is drugged. It's not special. So in this way, careful my friends. Careful because Krishna loves you. He wants to make you a son. And the sadhus, the sadhus are known for their straightforward making Vrindavan everywhere. In Vrindavan, we worship Tulasi. And when you worship Tulasi, you can experience something very sweet. The sweet sense of the Tulasi plant of Vrindavan. Turned, the four Kumaras, who were Brahmavadis, totally realized, but when they smelled, the Tulasi plant. They became devotees of the Lord. Says this is too nice. This is too special. There's something, something in that smell of the Tulasi plant. So, what to say? What to do? This is our, this is our tradition. We want to become sadhus, and we want to make Vrindavan. and. For us, Vindavan is today, here, and tomorrow, for the end of the Mela. Then we shift Vindavan right back to Reinickendorf, to our wonderful place. And I very wholeheartedly request you 
to make your Ishtadev, your Ishtadev means you participate in paying off the house, make it a goal, make it a competition if you want. Who helps more to pay off Krishna's house and that Krishna is not living in danger, that he may be evicted. So he should at least, and let's make a society, a group of devotees, of Brahminical council, a true Brahminical council, helping each other and taking responsibility, and making our temple all the time better. We need, we need to have this temple really nice. We need to have this, uh, this program, it's very nice. So that people, you know, a big temple like Kuruksh and like Vinda Kunja, it's, it's, it's not easy. So many people come in and out, in and out. Fortunately, we have so many corners. You can go in the library, you can go in the temple room, you can, soon you can sit in the basement, you can sit in the garden, you can take a walk. You can even go in the Spielplatz. Mm -hmm. We have everything there. But we have to concentrate on the actual goal of it. <coughs> Our goal is not to be on the Spielplatz. Our goal is to be in the temple and sing the holy name. Our goal is to have nice preaching going on. And our goal is that the children are welcome. So we need a corner for the children. Because we have so many children. Where the heck are we going to put the children? Mm -hmm. We can't have them in the same area where people are trying to listen to the philosophy, so we must create a beautiful children area. No, that's what we're going to do right next to Amarish's uh, uh, place. There's going to be the children area and, and, and the yoga and, and other activities. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, and, and then we have to have a place for the women, where the women can meet and where the women can decide how to become more stronger devotees. Then we need a place for the elderly people. Then we need a place, well, you see, the place is already full, no? You see, now we have to open another temple, another Vrindavan, okay, why not? What's wrong with that? This doesn't have to be our only, only place. Uh, we can have uh, little satellites from the temple everywhere. And we have many plans. I don't know. I hope you have plans. Because your plans is your way. Your plans is your, is your process. It is your, it is your advancement. That's what it says here. Coming back to our verse. Then, only then, in the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastime activities of the Supreme Personality is very pleasing, satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter is freed for Maya, and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotional service and devotion begins. In other words, then you start doing things. Then the devotional service begins. That's it. That's, devotional service means making Vendam. When I go to a place, the first thing I look, where is Kishigat? Where is my Yamuna? Where is my Radha Kunda? Shara Kunda? Where is, where is the joy? Hmm? Right? Where is the altar? Where is Krishna's kitchen? Where is Krishna's bank account? Where are Krishna's sadhus? Where are Krishna's preachers? And I always tell the devotees, even like Ramanuja is like out there in Austria, don't speak good German yet. He's trying. And he has already has to give classes. Why not? Because he is the sadhu there, that's why. There had no other sadhu in Linz for doing it, so he has to do it. When I went to Portuguese, to, to Brazil, I didn't speak one single word of Portuguese. And I became a temple president because the temple president ran away. So they made me a temple president here. You know. Uh, please, can you tell them? <laughs> I had to get everything translated. It was crazy. The uh, situation was so crazy that I learned Portuguese like a wildfire. Uh, 
Then a few, a few months later, I don't remember, maybe, maybe eight months later from that, I was invited to a TV discussion in the north of Brazil. And there was a discussion that was supposed to be with Christians and Muslims and Hare Krishna, a debate. It was by, organized by the television of the Recife University. So I went there and it was a nice, everything was very good with the devotees, but the Christian and the Muslim didn't show up. And it was a live program, live transmission. So the moderator came to me, he said, we have a little change of our program, the next two hours are yours. And here's the day. And here the day. Just like today. And I don't know what it will. I think if, if, if I see that recording today, I probably want to go in the mouse hole for shame. But, you I went, I managed it, I just kept talking, talking, and, and they were very satisfied. I mean, otherwise he would have interrupted me, you know, couldn't understand anything. You know, Krishna consciousness is great, even if you speak about it like a, like a, uh, like, like a pigeon or something, uh, that still it's nice. So, what I'm saying, yeah, preaching is, is our life. Sadhus, that's what they do, they preach the best they can, and somebody may listen, somebody may not listen. Maybe somebody became a devotee from hearing that television program. I don't know. I hope so. But, so the whole thing is that we, we learn that we have to talk about Krishna. Our, the, the, the temple of our heart is filled with the divine sound of the Mahamantra and the Bhagavatam. That's what the temple of our heart is filled with. And of course we have a problem in Berlin, big problem. What is that? Too many projects. Everybody wants their little project, their little project, their little Vishnu Priyasham, their another thing, their... Uh, but there is our Vina homepage management, this is this, this is the children, Krishna's children program. So we have a little here, a little there, a little everywhere, right? Hmm. Interesting, huh? And of course that draws energy from our temple. Now we have a, a place in front now, a place here, a place there. It draws, it sucks. But if those devotees in all those places are serious about the Ishtadev, then they don't allow it to suck in the country. They create energy in their respective places and bring over energy for the temple so that we can pay off this debt and make this the best Krishna center of Ashraya in Europe. Not commercial. Sometimes commercial things also give difficulty. Some of our temples have become commercial without us wanting to be commercial. Like the Truly Park in, in Peru, this is now an official tourist donation uh, destination from from the north of Lima. It's in the Carmi Bogues, in the, 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 the you, you just get buses coming you know, all the time. Oh, no, this is the Krishna temple here on the beach. Now you can go down and make a guided tour, see the permaculture gardens, and, and like this, and people come and paint. It's good. It's great preaching. But sometimes we get so busy to looking after everything, we have hardly time to do our, our, our real tasks, no? So this is like sometimes. So, but the, the Vinda Kunja should be a real transcendental ashraya place. And I thank you all very much for participating in that. I thank Prem Kishore being a humble president, really a humble and exemplary president. I thank all the other devotees who are part of it, of the community. Really, I am deeply indebted. Govinda Vilas told me, come quickly, we have a lot of things to take care of. I said, okay, I'm going. I even didn't make commitment with Poland, with Czech Republic, with Austria, with Munich, with Switzerland, with Hungary. With all those places, I didn't make commitment because I said, I have to go and fix this Berlin temple. 
because this place has to be 1A. Then I can help the others and, and get them. But actually, this is Ishtadev in, in Berlin. It's worked all together heavily, enthusiastically. Let's get the thing going and finish paying it off and finish constructing this place. It's not so much. If you compare that to construction we do in South America, it's a peanuts. Just fixing this old house and the other one, and maybe if we, if we get permission to make a temple in the middle or something, I don't know what exact plans we have, some in, in between beautifying plans which are very beautiful. If we can fulfill our in between beautifying plans, plans the place is already going to be a swanky place for spiritual life. So, uh, so it's not a big job. I mean, the temple they constructed in Nanda Falfa. These few Hungarian devotees, that's a huge job. They made it from zero to temple bells ringing. Good example, no? Let's, let's, let's get enthusiastic as the Yatra and help me to finish this. Let's pay it off. I don't like Krishna owes to the Deutsche Bank or something like that. doesn't fit in with me because it is a rule in India that Radha Krishna must have their own place. It's a rule, it's not, I didn't invent it. Because it's just crazy that you say, this is Krishna's temple, but it belongs to the bank. It just doesn't fit together. I mean, we can rent, but Krishna should have his own place. <laughs> this is how I learned it, and this is how we do it. And I'm ready for the marathon. If I have to come here myself and and head up the marathon, and I'll do it. But if I don't have, because I have a lot of work to do, this is not my only job to see that we pay off the Berlin Temple. This is really not. I have a lot of other things. And all the other devotees and all the other projects, they are also important to me. Don't think that only Berlin is important to me. It's not true. Everywhere. There's a, there's a temple in Prague, we also need to get a place for the deities in Prague, Radha Gopi Nat. Radha Gopi Balaba have their own temple. And besides that, anyhow, you know the rest of the story by heart. No need to repeat. So I thank you very much. And this Mela is very nice. I also like this new place. It's really beautiful. Very nice spirit of union in front of Gandharika. Govinda Sundara, Mahaprabhu, and Radha Berlin Ishwara. Very nice, and we have another very nice news. Now we have a temple in Karlsruhe with Ra Radha Sham Bihari. So it's also very nice. So Krishna has his, his divine plans are going on.